All right, guys, we've made it up to one of Saddam Hussein's many palaces. This one overlooks the ancient civilization of Babylon. Obviously, as we said before, we saw it from the ancient city. Now we're up here. Check out the view of the city. Unbelievable. He definitely knew how to pick a spot, even if he had to, uh, you know, move an entire ancient town of people and demolish their homes. So yeah, he destroyed the so village. You, you used to live here, right? Yes. And, and you Saddam destroyed? But yes. Well, about here, 120 house. When? 120 when house. Was that? The 90s? 1986. 86. Okay, so, uh, Destroyed and the building this. The people who used to live in the, in the village, wh where did they go? Now, round in Babylon. Uh, uh, that time Saddam gave money, good. Uh. Yes, he said. He gave you money? Yes. I'm destroying yeah. your house, but here's some money. So were people very angry or were they okay with it because of the money? No, some people angry for Saddam because Brit here, grandfather live, yeah. father live here. Yeah, me family. angry that time. You were. Because me, that time they destroyed this uh, village, me cry here. Mm. Oh. Yes. My mom visit one month, two months visit this place. Really? And they cry here. Oh. Because no. Yes. How how old were you when that happened? Me? Huh. That time in nineteen twenty. Twenty. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Me nineteen sixty six. Walks are Ajdad Namato in That time my grandfather because he, that story died. Oh. It was very sad. He was very sad. The village like the building like in Babylonia before. Oh, ancient uh, buildings. Yes. But the village was not a city, but here, the city was built in 1812. So the, the village uh, was built, he said, uh, in 1812. 1812? Yes. Ah, wow. So if you see that tree, surrounded with concrete and just like protection, this was Saddam's special tree, palm tree here. And uh, he actually appointed one of the farmers just to take care, the, take care of that tree. That was his whole job? Just one tree? Yeah. Yeah, he actually visited this place only one time in his life. Saddam. During the construction. During the construction, he came here to visit that place and he just like uh, that tree and that's it. Uh, <laughs> so random. When yeah, it is random. This palace, yeah. when it was completed, he never visited. He, he never... Stay, yeah. He so never it, stayed here. He never saw it completed. No. When was only it? in videos, maybe because of the invasion or because he just didn't. No, no. He, he uh, probably well, didn't have the time or he, he yeah. Too this many palace. Too he, many palaces. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't and, have time. And of, the palace mm. it has a it had a lot of uh, people worked here maintaining it. Uh, the food was all all the time okay. ready, preparing every day. Just if he decides to come. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my God. Exactly. And when did it, when was it completed? Do you know? Uh, 1988 okay. or 89 like uh, the end of the war the end 19... of the Iran-Iraq war yeah, yeah. Huh. but he, after, to, after 1991 after the Kuwait operation invasion and liberation etc yep. uh, he was very scared so he was uh, uh, to maintain his security so that's why he doesn't show in public places that much ah ok so, so he kind of went into hiding yeah. Not, not fully, but yeah, he was yeah, yeah. paranoid. Yeah. This is, uh, these are two uh, letters of the Arabic alphabet. Uh -huh. This is Saad and Ha, in Saddam Hussein. So, decorating the whole palace with two, two Arabic alphabets, Saad and Ha. Basically, putting your names everywhere. He, put his, he carved his initials yeah. into so the wall. This is Saad, and this is Ha. Ah, Hussein. S S H essentially. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, Saddam, when he was young, he was kind of, kind of fascinated by Stalin. Mm -hmm. So he, he he used to like uh, write and read about his biography and his he life. He did a pretty good job of imitating Even the him. The mustache. Look at the mustache. It looks like Stalin. Yeah. It's like a Middle Eastern Stalin. <laughs> Guys, he he carved his own face into mm -hmm. this wall in kind of a Soviet communist style mural here. Mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable. Oh my gosh. I mean, and, and there's another one over there on the walls. Oh yeah, I mean, another one. Yeah, he, he's carved himself into the building, literally in stone. All right, let's go inside. So, after 2003, after the American invasion, obviously Saddam was deposed. Uh, from what I've heard, most, the vast, vast majority of Iraqis hated Saddam. 
and were happy when he was overthrown. That doesn't mean that they're happy with everything that the Americans have done in and to this country since then. So if you see behind me, there's a ton of graffiti. This place, as soon as Saddam was deposed, was basically looted and there's a ton of graffiti. I mean, 20 years worth almost at this point. It's, it's pretty surreal because the, the structure and the, I mean, look, the, you still got the old chandelier up there. It's all so grand. It's, it's an insane view of the ancient city of Babylon, but the, the whole place is deserted. There's no furniture. There's, there's nothing in here. It's empty and it's covered in graffiti. So it's, it's, it's a unique and an eerie scene. <laughs> Here's the grand staircase, guys. It is closed off with a ton of barbed wire. Let me get my light out. Oh my goodness. And of course, view, sea of palm trees, totally. And this is the Euphrates River? It's part of the Euphrates, yeah. Part of the Euphrates River here. Gosh. And again, he only came here once during construction and never after it was completed. He had palaces all over the country. Are they, are all of the palaces like this now? like? looted and, and uh, kind of graffiti No, no, everywhere. actually, in Basra, I think they make it like a, as a museum. Okay, cool. Yeah. This is almost more interesting to see exactly what's uh, happened to it since like it was left. Yeah, uh, some people, like some activists here, they're, they're trying to force the local government and even the central government in Baghdad to make it as a museum. Uh -huh. So Preserve they, it like this? Yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll, of course, we're gonna keep a lot of parts of uh -huh. it, even the parts that have like Saddam Hussein's touch. Yeah. Because, you know, you, we can't, you can't deny the past. Part of the history, right? yeah. Yeah. So it needs a lot of money. Uh -huh. So I hope in, in the next three or four years, this place would be like an amazing museum. Uh huh. It's, uh, it's surreal being able to just walk in here and explore it like independently, though. Yeah. Especially for Americans. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Imagine, I mean, uh, imagine you being here like 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, years I was before. seven years old, but yeah, it's crazy. Here are the elevator shafts. Just everything in here totally destroyed. again. Let's just see what it looks like. Huh. Gotta say guys, th this for me is one of the most mind-blowing insane places surreal places I've ever been in my life. Alrighty guys, so we've just come to the modern day town uh, here in the Babylon region. It's called Hila and we're gonna get some lunch. I think we're going for grill, kebab, that kind of thing, so let's go take a look. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? So guys, we got a little meze platter here. It looks like we got some chickpeas and yogurt. We got some hummus in the middle. Got some veggies, chickpea salad. A lot of chickpeas, which is amazing. I think it's a fruit salad. That looks like a banana here. 
Apple. Apple? Apple. All right, let's see what this one is. Banana. We're gonna get a big plate to share of a bunch of different kinds of meat. Ali, how excited are you? I'm very hungry. Hangry. Hungry. Hungry, angry? Hungry. No, hungry. Oh, just hungry. I am hungry. just hungry. Oh, just hungry. <laughs> okay. This is just a spoonful of hummus. Wow. You know, I don't, I don't feel the need to That is honestly one of the tastiest hummuses, hummuses I've ever had. So good. Wow. And I'm not just saying that for this video. That is so delicious. You can literally just eat it by the spoonful. It's like twice the size of Doug's head. I have to zoom out. Look how big it is. <laughs> Let's try a little bit. Fresh out of the oven. We might go take a look at it after we eat. Bread in Iraq. A plus. Time for a little dunk in the uh, nice little tomato-y spicy soup. Mm. Ooh, meaty too. It tastes like lamb. Take your hands off that hummus, you. This is hot. Thanks so much. Give it here. Hey, no. give it. <laughs> no. Lots of olives. I was never a big fan of olives in America, you know, growing up, but I really love them in the Middle East and Turkey. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Let me just put my hand on there to show you guys how big this tray is. <laughs> Alright, let's try the chicken first, huh? Delicious. Beef liver? Probably. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Beef liver is not what you would expect. When I think of liver, I think mushy and like, I don't know, that's like what I grew up thinking. But this liver is, is just like beef to me, the texture, and it's delicious. Anyway, that's enough filming. I'm really hungry and it's time to eat. See you afterwards. And as with most meals in the region, we're gonna end the meal with a, a little chai. There's about a uh, quarter inch of sugar on the bottom there. Just Pure sugar. sugar. Just sugar. Delicious. So sweet. Pure sugar. Actually, it's nice on a day like this. It gives you a little jolt because it's so hot out and like exhausting kind of. It's really nice. Assalamu alaikum. This is where they're cooking the bread? Wow. This is where the magic happens, guys. That's a big mixer. <laughs> We've just got tons and tons and tons of what I think is flour and maybe other ingredients. Look at this, wow. And these are the ovens where they go. And that is how that incredible bread that you saw earlier comes to be. Pretty amazing. Guys, before we leave, I saw something uh, up on the counter here that I want to try. I think this is some kind of a palate cleanser. These are, they look like little rocks to me. Chew it? Okay, let's see. Here we go. Whoa, that was a weird flavor. Oh, I don't like that at all. It tastes like shoe polish or something. That was interesting. I think it's some kind of palate cleanser, but it, it, it tastes like uh, some kind of uh, industrial cleaner product or something to me. I'm not a fan. <laughs> what is that called? It's essentially like gum, but it doesn't have a flavor. You just... It has a flavor, all right. <laughs> it doesn't. To me, it had a strong flavor. A flavor of what? <laughs> mm, not good. <laughs> What's it called, though? It's, we call it uh, water gum. Water gum? Water gum. That's what that was. Because it doesn't taste like anything. It just I don't know what's the point of it, to be honest. It doesn't taste like water, that's for sure. <laughs> Jay, you should try it. I've had this before, and it's not good taste. They have the right but Yeah. Just, just take a few. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Pucci Pucci. 
little little street pub. You're so cute. Alrighty, guys, that was incredible exploring Babylon. It's just mind blowing the amount of access you have here in Iraq to these ancient, incredible sites and Saddam's palace. I mean, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. That was one of the coolest things I've ever done. So. We are continuing on now. We are on the road to Karbala, beautiful, holy city for Shia Muslims. And it's going to be incredible. I am so excited. I'm gonna have a lot more details about that in my next video from Karbala, so stay tuned, guys. And if you're enjoying the videos, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out and keeps me traveling and making more videos for all of you. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.